Good afternoon, family and friends, and welcome to the marriage ceremony and celebration of Jillian Hirsch and Jordan Carey. For those of you in attendance today who I do not know and have not yet had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Michael Hirsch, and I could not be more proud to be able to call myself the older brother of this drop-dead gorgeous bride. For those of you may, who may be wondering, no, I'm not a real minister, despite the fact that the states of New York and California may say otherwise. <laughs> About two years ago, I had the honor of officiating the wedding of my older sister, Lindsay, and her amazing husband, Tim. And when Jill and Jordan approached me and asked if I would be willing to come out of retirement to do the same for them, <laughs> I jumped at the opportunity to do so. Jill and Jordan, I am so incredibly honored, proud, and thankful to be standing here beside the two of you on this very special day. And while I cannot promise that this ceremony will go off perfectly without a single hitch, I can promise you that we will get through this together, and when you walk back down that aisle, you will be doing so as husband and wife legally. Before getting started, I wanted to take a moment to thank each person here in attendance with us today. Our beautiful bridesmaids, our handsome groomsmen, Jordan, Jillian, and all of you. You have traveled here from near and far, mostly from far, and I know it means the world to both Jill and Jordan to have each of you here to celebrate with them on this incredibly special day. By your presence here today, you are witnessing and celebrating the love that these two individuals have discovered in each other and have grown over the course of the past six and a half years. And by your presence here today, you are supporting their decision to commit themselves to each other and to a lifelong relationship together. Each of you hold a very special place in the hearts of Jillian and Jordan. And on behalf of the bride and groom, I thank each and every one of you for joining us on this special day. Additionally, Jillian and Jordan have asked that I please take a moment to acknowledge a few special people that are near and dear to their hearts. First and foremost, their parents, Steve, Elizabeth, Ron, and Shelley, who together have made this incredible weekend possible. Next, each of their grandparents, Hugh Denham, who made the journey from Alberta, and Lucy Denham. Ken and Francis Carey, who traveled here from sunny Phoenix, Arizona. And of course, Arlene Hirsch, who traveled all the way from Long Island to be here today. <laughs> Grandma, you are the matriarch of our family, and we love you and cherish you with uh, more than words can explain. Last but not least, a few very special people who are unfortunately no longer physically with us, but who will forever be with us in our thoughts and in our hearts. Jillian and my grandparents, Ruth and Joe Taylor, and Bill Hirsch, as well as our beloved uncle, Dale Kitchen. We love you and we miss each of you dearly. And while we wish that you were able to physically be here with us today, we know that you are watching over us and you are always with us in spirit. Jillian and Jordan, today you are surrounded by friends and family whose love and prayers are with you. Together, this group of people will not only ensure an epic and unforgetful celebration this evening, but they will also provide you with an endless support system for the marriage and the new family that is being created here today. It is therefore our duty as witnesses here this afternoon to provide Jillian and Jordan with our unconditional strength and support 
as they embark on this next wonderful phase of life. With that, I would like to invite Hugh Denham, Jordan's grandfather, to join us for the first reading. Hugh. Oops. Happy Jill and Jordan wedding day. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, uh, all I really need to know, I learned in kindergarten by Robert Fulgham. All of what I really need to know about how to live, what to do, how to do it, I learned in kindergarten. Wisdom was not at the top of the graduate school mountain but there in the sandbox at a nursery school. There are the things I learned. These are the things I learned, sorry. Share everything, play fair, put things back where you found them, clean up your own mess, don't take things that aren't yours, say sorry when you hurt somebody, wash your hands before you eat, flush cookies, flush cookies my foot. <laughs> <laughs> that was I was close though. But this is no joke. <laughs> Let me start over again. You don't mind it? Wash your hands before you eat. Stop. <laughs> Flush. Warm cookies, cold milk are good for you. Give them to someone who feels sad. Live a balanced life. Learn some, learn some, think some, draw and paint, sing and dance and play and work every day. Take a nap every afternoon. Be aware of wonder. Remember the little seed in the plastic cup. The roots go down, the plants go up, and nobody really knows how or why, but we are all like that. Everything we need to know is in there somewhere. And it is still true, no matter how old you are, when you go out of this world, go out into this world, it is best to hold hands and stick together. Remember that. Thank you, Hugh. I would now like to invite Lindsay's husband and my brother-in-law, Tim Brown, to join us for the second reading. Jill and Jordan, uh, we're just we're thrilled for you. So happy for you. Now I'm going to try and speak slowly so everyone can understand my accent. <laughs> <laughs> Blessing for a Marriage by James Freeman. May your marriage bring you all the exquisite excitements a marriage should bring. And may life grant you also patience, tolerance and understanding. May you always need one another, not so much to fill your emptiness as to help you know your fullness. A mountain needs a valley to be complete. The valley does not make the mountain less, but more. And the valley is more a valley because it has a mountain towering over it. So let it be with you and you. May you need one another, but not out of weakness. May you want one another, but not out of lack. May you entice one another, but not compel one another. May you embrace one another, but not encircle one another. May you succeed in all important ways with one another, but not fail in the little graces. May you look for things to praise, often say I love you, and take no notice of small faults. Lindsay, I hope you're listening to this. <laughs> if you have quarrels that push you apart, may both of you hope to have good sense enough to take the first step back. May you enter into the mystery, which is the awareness of one another's presence, no more physical than spiritual, warm and near, and near when you are side by side, and warm and near when you are in separate rooms or even distant cities. May you have happiness, and may you find it making one another happy. May you have love, and may you find it loving one another. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I'd now like to invite Jordan's cousins, Maddie and Riley Carey, to come join us for our third and final reading.
Love by Roy Croft. I love you, not only for what you are, but for what I am when I am with you. I love you, not only for what you have made of yourself, but for what you are making of me. I love you for the part of me that you bring out. I love you for putting your hand into my heaped up heart and passing over all the foolish weak things that you can't help dimly seeing there, and for drawing out into the light all the beautiful belongings that no one else has looked quite far enough to find. I love you because you are helping me to make of the lumber of my life, not a tavern, but a temple. Out of the works of my every day, not a reproach, but a song. I love you because you have done more than any creed could have done to make me good, and more than any fate could have done to make me happy. You have done it without a touch, without a word, without a sign. You have done it by being yourself. Perhaps that is what being a friend means, after all. Thank you both. Before we proceed to the exchanging of the vows, I wanted to take a moment to share a few personal thoughts on this very special day. I will never forget the moment when Mom and Dad sat Lindsay and I down to let us know that we would soon have a little sister, and her name would be Jillian. <laughs> Instantly, so many questions began rushing through my mind. I was five at the time. <laughs> did, do, did Mom and Dad choose another girl because they like Lindsay more than me? <laughs> Would Jillian get all of mom and dad's attention? Could I make her eat my vegetables and do my chores? What happens if I don't like her? Does this mean I'm destined to be a middle child for the rest of my life? What does being a big brother even entail? And why the heck would they choose the name Jillian? <laughs> Admittedly, I wasn't too thrilled about the idea of having a little sister. As time went on and Jillian began to grow up, I remember thinking, wow, she kind of looks just like me. <laughs> it was at this point I realized that it would be impossible for me to deny that she was my little sister. As we continued to grow, I slowly began to realize that this, this little girl was special in so many ways. And I began to love the fact that she was undeniably my little sister. She is smart, really smart. She is competitive. She's feisty. She's a go-getter. She's good at everything she tries. She has a huge heart. And as you can see today, she's absolutely gorgeous. Anyone lucky enough to have Jill as a friend knows that she is the best friend anyone could ever ask for. She is genuine, thoughtful, and caring, and absolutely devoted to the ones she loves. She exudes positivity, and she always manages to see the good in everybody. I can honestly say that she is the nicest person I've ever met, and despite being my little sister, over the years, I have realized that it is I who look up to her, not the other way around. Like most big brothers, I couldn't help but worry about my little sister, and I've always felt that it was my job to protect her, especially from men. <laughs> I didn't think that any man out there would ever be worthy of Jill, and if she was ever going to get married, I assumed she would have to settle. And then I met Jordan. Admittedly, at first, I was very skeptical of Jordan. After all, he was a couple years older, and he was a hockey player. <laughs> and with all due respect to all the other hockey players here, most hockey players are not like Jordan. <laughs> I had heard stories that Jordan was able to win Jill over very, very quickly, and so I decided before even meeting him that I was going to make him really work to win me over. <laughs> Well, that whole plan went out the window the moment I first met Jordan, because within minutes of doing so, he managed to win me over as well. <laughs> Jill had found herself a keeper. I had developed a bit of a man crush, and Jill, <laughs> and Jill better not mess this one up. <laughs> as I've gotten to know Jordan over the past six plus years, it couldn't be more evident that he is the perfect man for Jill. He somehow managed to fit right in with our crazy family, which is no easy task by any stretch of the imagination. And before I knew it, rather than just fitting in with the family, he became an integ integral part of our family. Jordan, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you for loving my sister as much as I do. Thank you for caring for her as much as I do. And thank you for always putting her first. Thank you for supporting her when she needs support encouraging her 
when she needs encouragement and lifting her up when she is down. Thank you for helping her grow into the amazing woman that she is today. It is evident to all that know Jill that you make her happier than anyone else in this world, and I am overjoyed that you are officially joining my family today. I am extremely pleased and honored to call you my brother-in-law, and I am confident that you are more than capable of looking after my little sister and protecting her like I have done for so many years. It's been such a pleasure getting to know the entire Carey family over these last couple days. And in doing so, it has only become even more clear to me than ever before how Jordan turned out to be the man that he is today. Ron and Shelly, you guys did an absolutely amazing job raising this man. And for that, I thank you both as well. Jill and Jordan, you are both so incredibly blessed to each have a family that has set such a perfect example of what love marriage and family should be, and I have no doubt that the two of you together will only raise the bar even higher. I love you both, and I couldn't be happier for the two of you today. Uh, we are now going to exchange some vows. <laughs> now you shall say a few words that will take you across a threshold of life. After these vows, you shall say to the world, this is my husband, and this is my wife. Jordan. Please repeat after me. I, Jordan. I, Jordan. Take you, Jillian. Take you, Jillian. To be my wife. To be my wife. I will share my life with yours. Share my life with yours. Build our dreams together. Build our dreams together. Support you through times of trouble. Support you through times of trouble. And rejoice with you in times of happiness. And rejoice with you in times of happiness. I promise to give you respect, love, and loyalty. I promise to give you respect, love, and loyalty. Through all the trials and triumphs of our lives together. Through all the trials and triumphs of our, loves, our lives together. This commitment is made in love. This commitment is made in love. Kept in faith. Kept in faith. Lived in hope. Lived in hope. And made new every day of our lives. And made new every day of our lives. Jillian, please repeat after me. I, Jillian. I, Jillian. Take you, Jordan. Take you, Jordan. To be my husband. To be my husband. I will share my life with yours. I will share my life with yours. Build our dreams together. Build our dreams together. Support you through times of trouble. Support you through times of trouble. And rejoice with you in times of happiness. And rejoice with you in times of happiness. I promise to give you respect, love, and loyalty. I promise to give you respect, love, and loyalty. Through all the trials and triumphs of our lives together. Through all the trials and triumphs of our lives together. This commitment is made in love. This commitment is made in love. Kept in faith. Kept in faith. Lived in hope. Lived in hope. And made new every day of our lives. Made new every day of our lives. We're now going to exchange the rings. Give me those bad boys. <laughs> Forgot the mic was on. <laughs> okay. We have all witnessed your exchange of vows, and now it is time to exchange the rings. Wedding rings are a tangible symbol of the vows that you have just made to each other. Wear them every day to remind yourselves of the promises that you have made here today. Jordan, repeat after me. Jill, I give you this ring. Jill, I give you this ring. Which is a symbol of my unconditional and love and commitment to you. Which is a symbol of my unconditional love and commitment to you. Go ahead and put the ring on, Jill. Okay, Jill, please repeat after me. Jordan, I give you this ring. Jordan, I give you this ring. Which is a symbol of my unconditional love and commitment to you. Which is a symbol of my unconditional love and commitment to you. Jordan, before I make this official and give you permission to kiss my sister, <laughs> we must first break the glass. <laughs> Once this glass is shattered, it can never return to its former condition, thus symbolizing the couple's wish to never return to the time before they shared their lives. <laughs> We have heard your promise to share your lives in marriage. 
we recognize and respect the vows that you have made here before each of us today. Here we go. (laughs) In the honesty and sincerity of what you have said and done here today, and in accordance with the laws of the state of California, it is my sincere pleasure and honor to officially pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Thank you.